Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be trying out the puzzle brand La Puzz. So La Puzz are a US-based brand, and from what I can tell, like online, they seem to have only been around since about May last year, so pretty recent in the sort of puzzle scene. Um, and all their puzzles, and I guess branding as well, actually has a very sort of kitschy 70s, 80s vibe, and Everything's very like quirky and odd and has like a pretty fun sense of humor. Um, and something that I thought was quite nice as well on their website, they uh, state that for every puzzle sold from their website, they donate a dollar to a volunteer organization, which is called the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So yeah, I think that's nice that they are, you know, uh, trying to be involved in the community. Um, so I have three of their puzzles here today. I've got uh, two 1000 piece ones and a 500 piece one. Um, so let's have a quick look at each one. Um, so this first one is the 500 piece one, it's called Lighten Up. And yeah, this one's really fun. It features all these like uh, colorful and very interesting candles uh, or different like weird characters and shapes. So we've got like a hula girl, carrots, a cactus with a cowboy hat, we've got several different beers. We've got like a weird snail thing, a teddy bear, mushrooms, hamburgers. Uh, what else, a banana, like all sorts of fun, weird candles. So yeah, very, very cool candle collection. And this one's a bit nostalgic for me because as a kid, I was quite into collecting candles, not quite as uh, many cool ones as this, but they still have, you know, a fair few fun, colorful ones. So yeah, this is a really fun puzzle, I think. And then this next one is 1000 pieces. It's called Teeny Tiny Things. And as the name suggests, there are lots of teeny tiny things. So most of the things in this puzzle are like miniature foods and like objects and things. So we've got like, what have we got? Mini scissors, mini bottle of milk, uh, little croissant, bananas, rubber gloves, bags, um, bacon and eggs, like all sorts of fun things. But then sort of sprinkled in there is like kind of normal size things. We've got like normal size coins, a pencil, battery, some keys. So yeah, it's pretty quirky and weird. Um, this one also seems very popular on Instagram and I can see why it's very fun looking and quite cute. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think this one will be very fun to do as well. And then the last one, which is 1000 pieces as well, is called I Heart Stickers. And this one's also very nostalgic for me because as a kid, I used to love collecting stickers. I have, I, even now actually, in my, amongst all my stuff in my spare room, I have uh, sticker albums full of stickers from when I was a kid. So yeah, I really was into it. Um, so yeah, this one features this massive collage of like all these fun and colorful quirky uh, stickers, which some look very 80s and 70s. Um, so yeah, it's really busy and detailed. And some also weird pictures in here, which I'm not sure are stickers. There's like a picture of a pear and a bunch of grapes. So like there's some weird stuff. But yeah, there's so many fun stickers, like lots of smiley faces, rainbows, hearts. Um, we've got like lots of little kittens and puppies, different like foods. There's also like those stickers in here. Um, I don't know if you remember like those sort of puffy plastic stickers with like the googly eyes. So they've got a few of those, which I remember being quite fun. Um, yeah, so there's all, all sorts of stuff. Some scratch and sniff stickers. If only this puzzle was scratch and sniff, that'd be pretty cool, but you know, one can dream. Um, but anyway, yeah, really fun and yeah, just so much going on. I really like it. So I think this one would be really fun as well. So in a sec, I'm gonna pick one of them, um, probably one of the 1000 piece ones. I think that'll be fun to do for this video. And then of course we will look at the uh, packaging on it, um, unbox it, look at the pieces, and of course piece it together. So the puzzle I've chosen to do in this video is the I Heart Stickers one. And I just thought it was just really fun and colorful, very nostalgic for me. And I haven't seen too many people do it. So I thought let's do this one and check this one out. So let's look at the packaging first. So it comes in this sort of almost a bit skinny or tall um, rectangle box. And yeah, it's pretty a thin height as well. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Magnolia boxes. Um, but yeah, it's the box itself is like fairly sturdy. Like you can bend it a bit, but yeah, pretty, pretty strong and has like a kind of glossy smooth finish. Um, so there's a lot of detail and information on this box. So let's kind of work our way through it. So the front has, I guess what is, yeah, the whole image. Um, and then we've got up here, okay, where do I start? So it says puzzles for all occasions and it says bonus fold out poster included. So that's good. Um, a random cut puzzle, each piece is different than the next. And then it's got the name, I heart stickers. 
and then it says 1000 piece puzzle le puzz with their like sort of happy face like their logo and then it says the 1000 piece double the fun jumbo size uh not recommended for tiny tables so actually i did hear that that their uh, puzzles are a bit like springbok that are, where like the i think both their 500 piece and 1000 pieces are like bigger than the sort of standard size you'd normally have for those uh, piece counts so yeah so I'm getting my big board out <laughs> when we do this um, and then yeah the whole puzzle image and then down here we've got a little circle with their sort of logo and it says le puzz find your inner piece spelled like puzzle piece um, yeah find your inner piece so it's cute and then let's pick a side so this side we've got le puzz but then in between here we've got the family fun loving family friendly figsaw fuzzle company <laughs> So that's like a bit of a fun tongue twister. And then it says 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. We actually counted 1,003. Uh, completed this puzzle is, so we've got the size here, 24 by 30 inches. I have no idea what that is in centimeters, but I'll pop it up the top. And it's got the name of the puzzle and their little sort of logo that they had here and a little barcode. And then I think, what have we got? Uh, this side just has a uh, Le Puz with their little logo here the name of the puzzle and it says puzzles for all occasions and then bonus fold out uh, poster included and then 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle and then this side just has like a sort of uh, segment of the main picture which is kind of cool so I guess if you have it on like a bookshelf you know it could look really cool like that so yeah I kind of like that and then um, this side is pretty much similar to the other end has La Paz and their logo, puzzles for all occasions, and talks about the poster. But instead of like the name, it's got like, you know, the choking hazard symbol and the FSC, um, like, you know, the what the pieces are made from, the different, the cardboard. Um, yeah, and like little logos like that. So let's look at the back. Um, wow. So there's a lot going on here, um, but it'll make sense in a minute. So, um, has like La Paz and then it says La Paz presents I Heart stickers, a 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle. We actually counted 1003 and then it has again the completed puzzle size and a barcode. And then, so it says, if you're reading this, first of all, we wanted to thank you for picking out our puzzle. And now you are wondering, what is this all about? And so amongst all this <laughs> craziness going on in the middle, it says, here's a selection of 108 stickers featured in this puzzle. Can you find them all? So yeah, all these like images and little bits of text, all like stickers that feature in here. So the back of each box of their puzzles is different. Um, they have some sort of activity or a little game or something. So yeah, kind of like you don't just get a puzzle, you get some other fun activity to do with your puzzle. So yeah, I guess you can always like, um, you know, try and find these. So, you know, it's got like, can you find the pizza slice, the blue alien, pancakes, fruit salad, basketball, um, ampersand, a mushroom, like all sorts of stuff. And then what else has it got on here? Um, so it's just got here made in China for uh, Le Puz and like, you know, they're based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, we've got here, we made this jigsaw puzzle because we love jigsaw puzzles. We collect them. We do them with friends and family. We give them away and trade them when we're done. We hope you love this puzzle as much as we do. Um, I'm just trying to find out if there's other things on here apart from like the uh, stickers you're supposed to find. Has their logo down the bottom here as well. Um, and then that little tongue twister, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> And then it has lapuz.com. Um, if you're satisfied with our puzzle, please tell your friends. If not, please like, you know, uh, email them. And what else? Oh, and then it actually has here, um, like for this sort of activity, it says we suggest using a fine point uh, dry erase marker to mark each bubble. So they actually say you can sort of draw on the back of this to like, you know, tick off like each thing that you find if you want. So you could do that or you could take a photo of it or something like that. But yes, yeah, I think it's a really uh, fun and quite unique touch. I've never like seen that on any puzzles before. So yeah, I think it's really fun. Um, so I think I've covered all the info. <laughs> so let's open this up. Oh, maybe. There we go. Oh, okay. So the inside of the lid is like, 
a checkerboard. It's sort of like gray and yellow and it says uh, good luck and has a little logo in the middle. So that's quite cute and a bit quirky and fun. I like that. I like that it sort of gives you something else to look at. Um, and then, yeah, there is actually text around the edges of the box. So this size side says, ooh, it smells like a pickle. And this side says, what did you expect? And this one says, um, a haiku for you. Okay, so maybe I should have started with this side. And then this side says, scratch, scratch, scratch and sniff. So I think it's meant to be a haiku for you. Scratch, scratch, scratch and sniff. Ooh, it smells like a pickle. And what did you expect? So that's pretty weird and quirky. I like it. It's a bit, you know, more fun and, you know, bonkers stuff going on. Um, so we have inside the pieces and they're in a yellow resealable Ziploc bag. So that's cool. So yeah, it looks like I shouldn't need any scissors. So yeah, that's, yeah, it's great. Love that. And then we've got a poster. So, oh, it's cool. Oh, okay. So yeah, one side has quite a big pull out poster, which is fantastic because especially for this puzzle, because it's so detailed, that it's really hard to see some of the tiny stickers. So this will be great having, uh, being able to re reference this. Um, oh, I noticed a cute kitty so already noticing more details. So yeah, that's really cool. And then actually on the back, it's not plain. It's yellow and it has sort of more of their logo and then has that tongue twister and like their puzz.com. So yeah, it's cool. Okay, can I fold this back up? Yes, all right. So yeah, that's really a nice inclusion. And then the inside of the box is more of that yellow and gray checkerboard and just has Le Paz in like these sort of quirky jumbled letters. So yeah, let's um, open up the pieces then. So I've just poured out the pieces and um, from what I can tell, like in the bag and amongst the pieces, there's not really much dust at all. So that's great. Um, and yeah, the pieces look super intriguing and interesting. Um, so for a start, they're all like irregular piece shapes. So uh, you know, very quirky, fun, uh, like, yeah, all the pieces are just really quite different from one another. Um, you know, yeah, they're just, yeah, really fun shapes and like very wiggly, wobbly. Um, so if you've ever done like a Springbok puzzle or a Cobble Hill, it's similar to that. Um, yeah, so you'll sort of know what I mean. Um, yeah, so definitely not like a normal standard cut, grid cut kind of puzzle. So yeah. Um, so I think those will be pretty fun to put together. It might make it a bit more challenging because um, unless you've done a lot of puzzles like this, sometimes it can sort of uh, test the way you sort of have to like think about, oh, which piece comes next because you're not quite sure what shape it's going to be. So it can sort of really like, uh, you know, test your thinking a bit there. Um, but also I'm hoping that because they're all a regular shaped and quite varied, it means that we'll hopefully have less false fits. Um, or none, hopefully. So yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, so let's grab an individual piece. Okay, this one. Um, so the backing is quite interesting. It's sort of like, I can't tell if it's part of the cardboard or if it's actually like paper stuck on. If it's paper stuck on, it's stuck on very like cleanly and it's very compressed. Like sometimes when I've uh, done other puzzles with the paper backing, you can see it peeling up or you can really tell. But yeah, this one I can't quite tell if they've sort of just cut a big slab of colored cardboard or not. So yeah, that's the other thing. The back is, um, it's a colored backing. It's sort of this purpley gray color. And from, from what I've read as well, um, each of their puzzles has a different color on the back, like one's pink and there's like other colors. So yeah, it's quite interesting. I've never really seen anything like this. Um, but yeah, just uh, it seems sort of cardboardy. I can't quite tell. And then the thickness is, um, it's kind of probably more thinner, thin to medium, I would say. Um, I also heard or read that their 500 piece puzzles are thicker than this. So uh, just something to note. But yeah, um, it's probably yeah thin to medium thickness. And I would say, yeah, I could, I'm not going to do it too much, but you can, I can definitely flex the piece. It is kind of more on the I guess softer or bendier side, not too soft. Like it still feels strong, but I think depending on the piece, especially for like this one with a thinner bit in the middle, um, you could probably bend it fairly easily. Um, so just, I guess that's something I have to be aware of. And then the top is very smooth. Um, it sort of almost has a little beveled edge, which is kind of nice. Um, 
And yeah, it's smooth and there's a little bit of sheen from my extra lighting, but it doesn't seem overly glossy. Like it's nowhere near as glossy as like the cardboard box. Um, so this is gonna be interesting to see if I'm gonna have much problems with glare or sheen when I'm actually puzzling. Um, but yeah, otherwise it feels very smooth and doesn't seem overly glossy. And then yeah, the other thing to note is uh, the edges are very cleanly cut and very sort of smooth and crisp. Um, whereas I found sometimes with like Springbok puzzles and even Cobble Hill, sometimes the edges are a bit more rough um, or very cardboardy. They don't have quite as clean a cut. So yeah, I think that's sort of interesting. And then the top of the pieces as well, like the printing looks very bright and crisp and clear. Like it seems to match what's on the box and poster. So yeah, it looks, it's looking good. I can see everything clearly. It doesn't look particularly like blurred or anything like that. So that's good. Um, so in terms of how I'm gonna put this together, I, my first thoughts are that I think there's a, like heaps of detail. So I think doing the border should be pretty straightforward. And that'll also help me sort of figure out how big this is exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need my big puzzle board, that's for sure, but I'm not quite sure on the size yet. Um, but apart from that, I'm not too sure how I'm gonna do this one. I mean, I think there'll be some obvious things like this pear, the grapes, maybe the peace sign and this sort of pink smiley face where I can probably find those pretty easily. But apart from that, there's like so much going on and there's colors everywhere. Like even if you picked out all the reds, there's like red, 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 all scattered all throughout. So I don't think that will make it that easy. So it might be one of these puzzles where I just, you know, pick up a piece and go, oh, okay, it's got this detail on it and try and locate it looking at like the reference picture and then placing it like that. So I might be sort of picking up the, I guess, probably the poster and looking at that a lot. Um, so yeah, we'll have to sort of see how that goes. Um, yeah, I think it is gonna be fairly tricky though, cause maybe fairly time consuming because there's just so much detail, but I think it'd be really fun as well. So speaking of fun, I think we might as well get into some puzzling.
So I am back and I've really been enjoying putting this puzzle together. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, there's just like such a fun variety of like colorful, quirky, cute, silly stickers and like it's very nostalgic. I've definitely found a few uh, stickers I really like. There's like a cute sort of pink and yellow, like one of those puffy plastic teddy bear stickers with like googly eyes and there's I guess like one here that's going to become a cat and another cute bear. So I really like those. Definitely had a lot of those as a kid. So yeah, that's kind of brings back memories a bit. And there's like a lot of fun like text or slogan ones like I love lunch. That's definitely true. Uh, Think Friday, out of order. There's like a ticket stub here. It says like admit it, I'm perfect. Um, yeah, and then there's just like lots of yeah cute animals. There's like kittens, puppies, bunnies. And then like lots of fun like bright sort of smiley face things and holographic stickers and yeah it's like just a lot of all sorts of things going on you know I think yeah it's just a lot of fun discovering them and I'm sure I'm going to be discovering heaps more in the next puzzling session and probably even after I'm done as well so I might even have to try out that little activity on the back of the box where I have to go through and find all the different stickers so that could be fun um, so the this first session of puzzling took uh, three hours and 50 minutes, so a bit under four hours. And I definitely found the first part of it slow going. And that first part was me trying to assemble this border, which you might be able to tell I still haven't finished that. <laughs> There's like quite a lot of gaps. And I think part of it is just that amongst the pieces, like because they're all a regular shape, there's actually quite a few that sort of have uh, false edges. And so I've been ignoring a lot of those thinking you know that they're all false edges but actually some of them I think were real edges like I've got some little pieces along here that I think I definitely like overlooked thinking oh no they're not actually edges but they are so yes yeah, so I think we've got a few of those to still find um, but I'm sure it'll come together over time so yeah I think um, in hindsight I probably should not have done the border first but I mean you know looking at the picture you'd think it would be easy and like, I guess most parts were, but yeah, then there's all these sneaky little bits that, you know, are hiding from me. So, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, definitely after that, it got a lot quicker and easier, especially like putting together these big sort of uh, distinct areas and chunks of color, like the pink smiley face and the grapes and the pear and the globe and that sort of thing. And then even after that, just pulling out like all the text slogans, that was pretty quick and easy. And you know, and then just picking out different colored things or distinct images and stuff. So yeah, I think that's a lot quicker than trying to do the border. Um, so I'm not sure how long the second session will take. Um, I'm sort of thinking it might be quicker than the first, just because um, I have less border to contend with, but also, you know, there's a lot less pieces now. I mean, there's still a lot, still got, you know, a, two boxes here with pieces, but um, you know, there's a lot less and I'm getting more familiar with the puzzle and yeah, so I think it, I'm thinking it'll be, it would take less time, but we'll have to see because I sort of think I'm maybe roughly halfway, but yeah, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. There's no, no rush as long as we're having fun, I think. Um, and then, yeah, if, as for like sort of the overall experience and I guess piece quality, I really like the pieces. Um, yeah, the irregular shapes are really fun and they slot together quite nicely. Um, However, they, it is a little bit hit and miss uh, when picking up sections, like, I don't know, let's see. Okay, yeah, so like this, it kind of comes apart a bit, but then, I don't know, yeah, that stays together. So, ooh, oh, it does it. So sometimes they stay together and sometimes they don't. So yeah, it's a little, uh, yeah, it's not consistent, but I think that's sort of the case with a lot of puzzles. Um, so yeah, the pieces aren't super tight fitting. They, they look like they slot together nice, nicely and they don't look too loose, but yeah, obviously when going to pick them up, they don't have uh, a super tight fit. Um, yeah, so just something to note, I guess, especially if you're building sections, you might want to consider where you're building them in case that doesn't all hold together. Um, and then, yeah, I actually really also like the feel of the pieces. So the like pieces themselves, like even though they are a bit thinner, they still feel quite strong and like have a nice hard, soft, uh, hard and smooth top um, with nice sort of beveled edges. The edges are very clean cut and yeah, it looks, yeah, they just look nice. Um, and actually I haven't found any damaged pieces. Everything looks perfect. So yeah, it's been really good. Um, yeah, so yeah, quite like, they feel nice to handle. So I quite like that. Um, I think the only thing is because they're a bit thinner, sometimes it's hard for me to pick them up with my nails. So <laughs> something to note if you have fake nails like me. 
Um, yeah, and then talking about this sort of smooth top, um, it, I have found a little bit of glare, to be honest. Like, obviously now I have a lot because I've got extra lighting, but when I'm just puzzling, I just have like the above light, or the light above me, I should say. Um, and there's been a bit of glare here and there. So not terrible, but you know, just, I guess, something to note because obviously it's gonna affect people differently depending on what lighting you have, I guess. And then I think the only other thing really was uh, puzzle dust, which is actually kind of non non-existent. Like I haven't really seen any in the box and my puzzle board is looking completely spotless. Um, there's no dust at all. So yeah, really impressed with that. Um, yeah, so I think overall, you know, obviously there's a couple things that I wish were a little bit different, like the glare and maybe holding together a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, apart from that, I really quite like it. I'm having a lot of fun. I enjoy the quirky piece shapes. I think it sort of goes with the quirky theme of the puzzle. So yeah, just definitely enjoying it. And I'm actually really excited to keep going and, you know, uh, put the rest of it together and find all these like f other fun stickers. So yeah, so uh, speaking of which, I think, you know, we might as well uh, finish chatting and uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get back into some puzzling.
I finished the puzzle and I have to say I really enjoyed piecing this one together. It was just a lot of fun discovering all the like cute little stickers and I'm still finding more things even now. Um, yeah, it's definitely my kind of puzzle, very colorful, very cute, quirky. Yeah, and there's just so much like jam packed into it. So yeah, I really, really love the image and just had a great time putting it together. It was definitely a little bit on the challenging side though. Um, so this last session of puzzling took just a bit over four hours and all up both sessions took me a bit under eight hours, I think it was. Um, and I thought it would be the irregular piece shapes that would, you know, that I would find a bit tricky to work with. But actually I, they didn't really like uh, cause me any issues at all. Like I was actually way more focused on, you know, finding where uh, stickers went and, you know, focused on the imagery and almost forgot about the irregular piece shape. So that was sort of interesting. Yeah, so I guess some of the things that made this puzzle tricky with the imagery was that, uh, you know, I had to keep, uh, like I'd find something in the puzzle box and then be like, okay, where does this love heart or rainbow or whatever it was, where does it go and have to sort of reference the poster a lot. Um, like some things were easy to figure out, like you could see straight away, like, okay, I know where the peace sign goes, I know where the pear goes or the pink smiley face, but there's so many other little things going on and to make it even a little bit more challenging some of them have duplicates so you know you might find a yellow smiley face and not realize actually there's quite a few in here and even different sort of types of smiley faces and there's multiple rainbows I can see multiple watermelons so yeah kind of like a little bit uh, tricky with like having sort of some duplicate items sprinkled in there so yeah, but still really fun. Um, I definitely didn't find it frustrating at all. You know, it's just a good level of challenge. I feel like, um, you know, it was uh, challenging and interesting enough to sort of uh, keep like maybe experienced puzzlers entertained, but I think also totally still suitable for beginner puzzlers. And I think even like kids and people of all different ages could really enjoy this. So yeah, I think it's yeah still a great puzzle image. Um, so let's talk about, I guess, the piece quality um, and overall experience. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it and had a very positive experience. And I think I said earlier, I really like the pieces. They feel nice to handle. And even though they're more on the thin side, they still have like quite a, you know, hard top and feel pretty sturdy and they have nice beveled edges. The top's quite smooth. And I guess that was one con was that uh, I found there was a little bit of glare and sheen when I was puzzling. And I think that's just going to be really dependent uh, on your lighting situation. So it's gonna be different for everyone, but I guess just something to note, but it was something that uh, I had a little bit of trouble with, not too much, but it, you know, it was, there was sheen here and there for me. Um, and then what else? Oh, so the piece fit, the pieces do fit nicely together. Like it, they fit reason, reasonably well, but they probably are a bit more on the loose side. So uh, it was a little bit hit and miss as to whether I could pick up sections like I think for the most part I could if I was gentle um, but sometimes they would like crumble so if I like pick up this yeah like I it looks like it's staying together but actually there's a lot of pieces starting to like you know crumble and fall apart so I don't think I'd feel very comfortable doing a puzzle pickup I wouldn't trust it for that but that's okay you know I think uh, they still hold together well enough to sort of you know move a fair amount of sections around, I guess. So yeah, so maybe the fit could be a little bit tighter, but it's, you know, it's still pretty good. Um, and oh, and there was no puzzle dust at all, like zero. I haven't had to, you know, clean this board at all. It's like spotless, so that's been great. And yeah, the pieces have just been in really perfect condition. I haven't found any damaged pieces, pieces at all. So yeah, really impressed with that sort of level of quality control. So yeah, so overall really, yeah, really uh, great quality and, um, you know, just a really positive and fun puzzling experience. So I had a lot of fun piecing together the iHeart stickers puzzle and overall just had a really positive and uh, enjoyable puzzling experience. And I would definitely recommend that one, especially if you like colorful, cute, nostalgic sticker puzzles. You know, I think it's, you know, a really fun puzzle to do. And I'm definitely keen to try these other two as well sometime, hopefully soon, because they look like a lot of fun to put together as well. And then as for the brand in whole, I mean, obviously I've only tried the 1000 pieces and I have read on their website actually that the 500 piece uh, 
puzzle pieces are actually supposed to be thicker cardboard and from what I understand maybe hold together a little bit more firmly than the 1000 piece puzzle so they might even be more enjoyable perhaps than the 1000 piece puzzles I'm not too sure hopefully I'll get to try it out soon but if you have tried one out let us know in the comments what your experience was like um, but yeah overall as a brand I really like the branding and the packaging I think it's really fun and eye-catching um, they're you know the boxes are really like pretty sturdy you know um, aren't ridiculously big which is good um, and look would look really aesthetically pleasing on a shelf like on display and I also like that you sort of get a poster and you get the resealable bag which is great and of course their images are just really fun they're very like odd and quirky and humorous and are quite different to like a lot of puzzle designs out there so I think they kind of really stand out and if you're looking for something that's just a little bit different I think these could be a really you know good option so yeah I think as in a general sense I would yeah definitely recommend this brand and yeah like I said I'm definitely keen to try more from this brand so I'm not going to touch on the price too much um, basically I ordered these directly from the US website so I did pay quite a bit for shipping so I think I probably paid uh, more than I should have for these um, but it was a bit of a splurge and I really really wanted to try them so I made an exception um, but I have seen that these are available in quite a few countries like different stockers so I think you know they have that listed on their Instagram where these can be bought um, and of course you can like I did buy them directly from the website um, I guess just to give those of you who are in the US a bit of an idea on price um, they have listed the 1000 piece ones for 38 US dollars and the 500 piece ones for 32 so I guess you can always let us know in the comments if you think that's worthwhile price for these or if you think it's expensive or yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below let me know what you thought of the iHeart stickers puzzle that I completed do you like that kind of really detailed jam-packed uh, type of puzzle design or do you prefer a different style of puzzle um, and what did you think of the La Puz brand in general? Do you like their designs? Have you tried any or are there any that you'd like to try? If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore jubi where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.